This video goes through a handful of useful tips and tricks and routines that will help increase productivity when it comes to drafting. Let's start with some text commands. Under the draw menu, under the text flyout menu, you will see a large variety of text commands that are all well worth checking out as each one has a specific purpose. Let us take a look at text wizard. Now we first look at the dialog box. It has an option to enter in a text string, which is exactly what I'm going to use this for, and that is to label the existing house number 165. The advantage of this dialog box and this little routine is that you can preset all your text sizes, layers, justification that you usually need for text, but in a more convenient manner. I'd like to use mText. I'm a fan of that and I'm going to use Center Justified. The text size scaler, that's a little large for me, I'm going to change that to 0.1. And instead of using the current drawing properties which would place the text on the layer that I happen to be set to, I'm going to unclick that and select the layer that I would like this to go on. Now this is for the building and I have an existing building text layer already set up. The color is set to by layer and the style is standard, which I will leave. Then I hit OK and place the text. So it's a very simple, easy to use command, but it does save a little bit of confusion when it comes time to placing text, especially when you're new to those types of functions. Next, I would like to place some labels on the polylines here for the existing roadway and the existing driveway. To do that, I'm going to use the text command draw text on polyline. A similar looking dialog box appears and we can enter in the text string and I will put existing driveway. Plot size is 0.08 which I will leave it. Instead of using drawing properties again I will set to a text layer and I'm going to put it on the existing layer existing. And then I'm going to take the option to slide text on screen. I'll show you what that does. And the position is above the line. When I select that and hit OK, I select any polyline. And you notice that the existing driveway text appears, and I can slide it to where I would like it placed. I'm going to do that again, and this time I'm going to write existing roadway and place that on this polyline across the road. I'd also like to add a label along this arc and have the text follow that arc. There's a command for that as well, text on arc. Again, a similar dialog box appears. I can enter in the text string, the plot size. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger since it's along the right of way. And again, instead of using drawing properties, I am going to set to the boundary text layer. I'm going to have the option select text offset on the screen and answer the question is the base of text towards the radius point. In this case, it is not. When I hit OK, I select the curve and it prompts me to place the curve and I'm picking the offset, not the location of the text itself at this point, just the offset from the line. And I can visually pick it about there. And then the second part of the command rotates the text. And I'm going to estimate about the center of that curve. If I would like to then modify that text after the fact, I can simply double click on the text. The text string appears from what was typed in before. And I can add more information and hit OK. And it continues to center the text with the additional information on that curve. The next little shortcut I'd like to show you is really a cosmetic routine, but a lot of surveyors do this. In this case, I'm going to flag in a benchmark. And what I'd like to do is kind of draw a shaded box around this that highlights that benchmark location. To do that, I'm going to use the command draw text and then text box. This command works on existing text in the drawing and you just simply pick a corner 
around the text. And it draws in a box with a shaded side and asks if you would like to draw a leader from the box. So I'm going to say yes I would and it picks the beginning point of the leader near the box and where it's going to be pointing. And the command finishes drawing the text box. The next command I'm going to show you is drawing text from a text file or text import. What this allows you to do is import text from an external text file, which is similar to something you can do using mText itself, but again, this gives you a dialog box that helps you control the placement of the text, the layers of the text, the size of the text, and also how it is rotated to the drawing. In this case, you can recall that I'm using a, uh, a twist screen, which sets a deview angle. You can see that the north arrow that y-axis is rotated somewhat. So we begin by selecting an external file and we have a legal description for this piece of property and I open that up and you can see in the preview the legal description. You can set the justification for the text as top left. Text size I'm going to change to 2. Rotation is going to be 0. If I want I can adjust things like the line spacing control which line to read first. I'm going to leave that on the first. Again, the layer that I want this to go on. Uh, I like mText, so I'm going to import this as mText, which aids in editing in the future. This text file I can see in the preview has upper and lower case. I'm going to change that all to an upper case and hit OK. And I simply pick a spot on the screen and define an mText box.